Okay, let's paint a color wheel. So most important supply is your paper towel, and I forgot to put that in the photo. So we're gonna start out with no water on our clean brush, and we're gonna go ahead and start with yellow. Um, you guys, this is tempera paint, so uh, it's, if you add water to your brush, it's gonna get really, really runny, so you really want your brush to be pretty dry with it. The good thing about tempera paint is it doesn't stain clothes, it's really inexpensive, and it's just good for these beginning painting stages. But I kind of call it kindergarten paint because it's really not that sophisticated a paint. Um, but again, perfect for what we're doing. Okay, so I just painted in the yellow. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just go to my red. I'm just doing those solid colors because um, there's no mixing required. And you can see that as I paint, I always just keep my brush. Um, so I'm just barely grazing the top of the bristles over the paper. No, at no point in time do I ever even get close to touching the metal part of my brush on my paper. Um, my young children at home, I have a six-year-old, and he does that all the time and it drives me crazy. So again, you just put a little bit of paint right on the tip of your brush and use the tip of your brush. So um, I always kind of start with a nice little outline and then work my way inward. And a lot of people are like, oh, I'm running out of paint. So then they push harder on their brush. Flip your brush or add more paint, but don't push harder. At no point should you ever push hard. Okay, so we started with our primary colors. Again, I dry my brush in between each one. I started with yellow because yellow is our lightest color and it's just really easy to get it dirty and um, like get other colors in there. So I always start with my lightest colors. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mix orange. And as I mix orange, you might think, oh, I know you make equal, you use equal parts of yellow and red, but that is actually not true. Instead, you wanna use quite a bit of yellow with your palette knife. Notice I've got my palette knife here and I'm just scooping a little yellow over into a pile. And then I'm gonna take a dot, like the tiniest dot of red, and I'm gonna add that to the yellow because yellow doesn't have nearly as much pigment as red does, so a little bit of red is gonna go such a long way. Now that didn't quite go as far as I had hoped. This is more of, I would say, my yellow orange, but that's okay, I'm gonna, um, just take another tiny little dot and add that in. You can see, oh, it might have done it too much. Uh, no, that's good. If I had overdone it, guys, do me a favor. Never just be like, oh, I'll take all the yellow and put it over here. Instead, you would just start a new little pile and go from there. So I've got my orange mixed up. My brush is clean and dry and I'll go ahead and put that orange right here. Now, to make my yellow orange, of course, I'm gonna use the orange that I just made, but let me show you how to do this the smart way, not the wasteful way. So we wanna try our hardest to always kind of conserve our supplies, not waste excess paint. So, I've wiped off my palette knife. I'm gonna take my a new pile of yellow, just set it right there, and then I'll use just a little bit of that orange that I made and mix it in with my yellow. And notice a tiny, I, I kinda probably use too much, but a little bit of orange goes a long way. It's always easier to make your colors um, darker, but it's hard to go lighter, so just be, be really careful with that. Um, and the reason I like mixing my paint with a palette knife is it's a lot easier to clean a palette knife than it is a paintbrush. So I can just take my paper towel and wipe my palette knife off instead of um, having to like rinse my paintbrush out. So it just makes it so much easier. All right. So this is a pretty light yellow orange, but that's okay. Really all I'm looking for when I grade these is, is each color kind of within that category of the next. So now for my red orange, since I'm finished with this orange, I'll just take a little bit more. I don't want to overdo it. Take a little bit more red and add it in. 
And don't worry, I'm not gonna walk you through mixing every single color. I'm just doing this first round. I'm also gonna kinda show you guys a little bit about mixing purple, because purple is a weird one on here. Always dry your brush so it's not too runny. And I'll go ahead and paint that guy in. So that's the basics of color mixing. Um, just kind of quick recap on like the different the different types of colors. So red, yellow, and blue are our primary colors. If we look at those on the color wheel, that makes something called a primary triad because it makes a triangle. So you can see red, yellow, and blue make a nice triangle. Um, our secondary colors are violet, green, and orange. And we get those secondary colors by mixing our primaries together. So when we mixed yellow and red together, we got orange. We're gonna make our second secondary color together here because again, this one's a little bit weird. Um, so I'm gonna make violet. And to make violet, I am gonna use um, more red than blue because blue is our most pigmented or powerful color. So I didn't clean my palette knife, um, which is not the best approach, but sometimes we all get lazy, right? Okay, so this is more of a red violet, so I can take a little bit more blue and just add it in. Or I could have just plopped down my red violet. Now what I wanted to show you about mixing our purples is that on the palette, it looks really brown, but when you paint it, it, it doesn't look as brown. It, it can, gets a little more purple. So I'll show you that in action right now. So I think I have, well, maybe a tiny bit more blue. So in terms of the ratio of red to blue with this one, I'd say maybe most, like a, a pea size of red and a barely a tiny bit less blue. That way your ratio is correct. Now I always like to test my colors out on the side here just to see because sometimes again our palette isn't quite right. I think that's good. Oh, you know what? I almost think it's still too red. So I'm just gonna keep adding until I think I've achieved a nice neutral purple or violet. Our next secondary color is green, and I'm gonna let you guys make that one on your own. Green is obviously a combination of a lot of yellow and a little bit of blue. Here we go, I'm adding more blue. Okay, I changed my mind. Maybe the perfect violet is equal parts, and I was wrong. And if you over mix on this uh, paper plate, you'll notice that the paper plate kind of starts to deteriorate and mix up into your paint. So just be aware of that. So as I go ahead and I paint my violet here, you'll see that, and maybe it's not gonna show up as great on the screen, but as it thins itself out, it looks a lot more purple than it does on the palette where the palette kind of makes it look brown. So again, guys, just keep reloading paint onto your brush. Don't ever try to think like, I'm gonna press really hard with the metal and that's gonna do the trick. And this might be a color where maybe if we add a touch of water, it'll spread it a little more thin and we'll be able to see the beautiful purple tone better. So this is a color, these darker tones, where you could add just a tiny bit of water. Um, <clears throat> painting surface is always an important factor of painting because obviously copy paper like this is gonna deteriorate as you paint it. So. Um, if you get it too wet or work at it too much, it's not the best approach. It'll just kind of tear up your paper. All right, so you can see I'm just adding a tiny bit of red into my this side of my violet to make a red violet. Now these combination colors of like a primary and a secondary are called tertiary colors. That's the fancy name. If you wanna just call them combination colors, that's fine too. Now each of these um, colors on the color wheel work together to create these things called color harmonies. So we are going to label and identify color harmonies later, but like I said, we've got our primary triad. So our primary triad is that red, yellow, and blue that make a triangle. There's also a secondary triad, which is green, violet, and orange, and that makes a triangle as well. We also have warm colors, cool colors, complementary colors, split complementary colors, rectangle colors, analogous colors, square colors. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything, but I might be. So those are the different color harmonies. I'm gonna let you guys paint the rest of your color wheel on your own now. 